15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
choir. Amen. 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 Came ready to have church. Hallelujah. He is our blessed Savior. Amen. Amen. And he's worthy to be praised. You heard scriptures, amen, this morning, and I'd like to use as a topic as we talk about Jesus and his love for us and Jesus' requests for us to love one another, simply the power of love, the power of love. Let us pray. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord. By the power of grace divine, and let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. God, we've come today, right now, this morning, because somebody needs to know that there's a word from you. Somebody's in crisis right now, Lord, and need to know. If there's a word from you, somebody got a moment of chaos right now, God, and they need to know that there's a word from you. And so, God, we thank you. I thank you for this preaching moment. Anoint my lips that I may speak what thus says the Lord. God, anoint my heart and soul that I feel your mighty presence. Bless your precious children. And God, all, with all simultaneously, you get the glory, honor, and praise. Speak, Lord, we, your servants, need to hear a word. And now, God, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength our Redeemer, and our rock. Amen. 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 The power of love. The story is told of a newly appointed preacher coming her first time to a new church, and she prepared, and, and the congregation was preparing to receive her with great joy and great love. The church made all types of arrangements, and she too made arrangements as well. She picked her text from John 13, talking about Jesus' greatest commandment to love. She picked her text from John 15, talking about the vine, talking about Jesus' command to love. Picked her text from John chapter 4, 1 John, asked the musician to play, and they'll know we're Christians by our love. Her first Sunday was incredible. She preached her face off. And the congregation was ecstatic. And they were awaiting anxiously the next Sunday. Next Sunday comes, preacher comes in the door, the congregation, church even more full than it had been before. They were awaiting a great word in great anticipation. But much to their surprise, the preacher took her text, John 13, John 15, talking about Jesus' love, and 1 John 4, talking about Jesus' love and God is love. She asked the choir once again to sing, I know we are Christians by their love. The congregation began to squirm a little bit because she started verbatim, start preaching the very same sermon she had preached the last Sunday. They squirmed a little bit. They didn't quite understand what was going on. They were wondering if there was imagination. They were looking around at each other. Preacher preached the exact same sermon. Next Sunday come. Oh, the church is really full now. They were a little anxious. Some were still talking about the last Sunday. Preacher steps up into the pulpit, takes her text. John 13, talking about Jesus' love. John 15, talking about Jesus' love. 1 John 4, talking about God is love. Once again, ask the choir to sing, and they'll know we are Christians by our love. She turned, and then she began to preach the exact same sermon. But this time... One of the mothers of the church stood up and said, Preacher, we know you knew. Preacher, we know you just got here. But you preach, what's up? Preacher, what's going on? I don't understand. Hey, I got questions. You preach the same sermon 
two times and you tried to give it to us again. What's going on? To which the preacher answered the question, ain't nothing going on and ain't nothing up. But as I came, I noticed that we got some work to do. As I came, I noticed that we as a church body, we got some contemplation. We got some things to accomplish. And when you get this love thing right, I'll preach you another sermon. Amen. Amen. Saints of God, we got some work to do. Amen. I'm not going to preach the same sermon next week. But when we get this love thing right, mm -hmm. oh, Jesus will be so pleased. Because as human beings, we all have basic human needs. We've got physiological needs. Uh, uh, we got to eat. We got to sleep. We need water. We need food. Without these things, we'll perish. But we also need love. We need a loving community and, and we need to feel love. When we miss out on that, we're missing something vital and critical to our very existence. We were meant to be there for each other. We were meant for community. We were meant for love. That's why I love that community day that we've got coming up in September. We were meant to reach out. We were meant to be there for each other. We were meant, you look at the, in the book of Genesis where when God created man and looked in Genesis 2 and 8 and said man shouldn't be alone and he made a woman and brought her to the man. Community and love were a part of God's design. So it should not come as a surprise to us that love and community are also critical elements for the church. This is a little hard for us to fathom sometimes because we come to church for a hoop and a holler. We come to church to hear our choir sing, amen. amen. Jesus, blessed Savior, and he's worthy to be praised and don't get me wrong I need to hear a word too when I preach I preach to myself when I come to church I want to hear the choir sing too but here's the thing in order for the church to be the church in order for the church to be what God designed us to be in order for the church to do what God said in order for the church to say it, we got to grow horizontally as well as vertically. Yeah, the spiritual is all right, but we got to reach out to one another horizontally and love one another with the culmination of God's plan for all of God's children. So when we look at the text, we got a shift from last week. I preached about Jesus being the vine with the branches that are to bear fruit. Now Jesus shifts into this love thing. The only thing that ought to be within us is the capacity to love one another. Even when people are prickly, we got to love one another. Amen. Jesus! Even when they pluck our last nerve, we got to love one another. I would submit to us that no matter how big your Bible is, no matter how many committees you're on, no matter your offices in the church, we can't be the men, the women, the boys and girls that God created us to be unless we've got love one for another. I love the fact that y'all said amen right there. Amen. Because you got a taste from my introduction that we got. You can look at just about every book in the Bible. No, every book in the Bible has got love entwined in it. Got scriptures and verses with love entwined. Go to the Old Testament, Leviticus 19. Love your neighbor as yourself. It started in the Old Testament, not just in the New. Proverbs 10, love ought to be greater than hate. Romans 12, love each other with the affection of brothers and sisters. 1 Peter 4, above all love. 1 Corinthians 13, now abideth faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love, saints of God. Love! 
love is the presiding principle of all that Jesus taught. We can wrap up 66 books in the Bible and I'll, I'll give you the synopsis right here. Amen. Go to Monday Sunday school tomorrow and say it's all about love. Will you come to Bible study? We're going to be studying ch Acts chapter 2. Amen. Talking about the beginning of the church. But when that church began and they gave to one another and they worshiped together and they fellowship with each other and they did communion and they went from house to house they didn't do you know they didn't all get along like that all those personalities all them folk Peter had preached 3,000 folks say 3,000 people ain't getting along I don't care what you tell me I know it was in the Bible 3,000 5,000 the next day y'all all them people didn't get together and always like but they had to love so what are the requirements? We're first called to obey and abide. We're called to obey Jesus' commandment to love so that we can abide in his love. Just like God loved Jesus. Jesus loved God and Jesus loves us and Jesus expects us to love. The characteristics and action of this love are multiple. Jesus' love towards us is demanding. It's full of his presence and promise. It's rich in displays of love. Anybody just have that love hug from Jesus when you know you all alone crying in the midnight hour body right with pain, but Jesus still comes to your rescue. When you're drinking tears for water, Jesus is right there. When your back's against the wall, Jesus is right there. When you feel like giving up, Jesus is right there. When you're sick in your body, Jesus is right there. When you feel like you can't make another step, Jesus says, keep on, baby. Keep on going. I'm right there by your side. Jesus is love. Hallelujah commandments y'all we struggle with this word commandment we balk at it we shy away from it because either we don't want nobody telling us what to do or we say a commandment is too hard it's simply not doable and I even I struggle my husband called me last night and usually my sermons are finished um, way before Saturday night but I I was struggling with this sermon a little bit I really was I admit it and um, he said well Amen. You need to really think about in your own heart what's going on. And I started thinking about that commandment. God, do I really have to cross every T and dot every I? God, I can't. How can I preach to the people if I'm struggling a little bit? When you look at the Sermon on the Mount and he said, Jesus says, blessed are they when they revile you and persecute you. Say all manner of evil against you. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Jesus says that. Jesus, that's crazy talk. When they talk about me, I want to talk about them. When they cut me, I want to cut them. Amen. Y'all, I didn't just say that. I'm sorry. Wait, write that on Facebook. I got to remember we're being taped. But that's the only commandment Jesus gives us. The only, and there are other imperatives, uh, abide and ask, but the only one command. And so I started thinking about this, amen, and, and it started to flow a little bit better. Amen. started thinking about running some errands this week. I was on Gate City Boulevard here in Greensboro running some errands. Everything going cool. Everything's going great. Traffic not bad. And everything was great on Gate City Boulevard. But there's one thing that always grabs me on Gate City Boulevard. One thing that can get and shift my attention and make me want what they have. Makes me want to drop everything and look and see the magic on Gate City Boulevard. You know what it is? It's the hot donuts now. It's something about that sign that make me want to turn around and do a U-turn in six lanes of traffic to get to that hot donuts now. It'll make me stand in a drive, uh, sit in a drive through line with 12 cars just to get to the magic and the mystique of that hot, make you eat two of them before you 
you even drive off and out yep. the driveway. The hot sign now. Saints of God, I, amen, it's just that good. And, and God was telling me right now, I, I want you to do something that's going to get the folks. We got to do something that's going to draw the folks in. We got to do something. We got to be a walking billboard for God. Just like we look and see that hot sun now, just like we look and see God says, I am love. God says, I need you to exude that. Quit trying to make it hard. Quit trying to make it difficult. Quit, quit trying to make it complicated. All I need you to do is love. Yes, yes. People not going to be able to resist the power of love if you display it like that hot sign. Mm -hmm. Now I need you to be hot. Thanks to God. I need you to be hot. I need you to be hot for Jesus. I need you to be hot for his grace and hot for his love and hot for his mercy and hot for his healing. We've got to be hot Christians that people will be drawn to. People will seek us out because we got the love of God on the inside of us. They want to gain what Jesus has put on the inside of us and the word for that is simply that kind of love is simply agape love you've heard me talk about it before it means praying and working for the highest good for others regardless of what they say regardless of what they do regardless of how they treat us it means as God was talking to me even last night even as it was late and I mean I'm like God because I like to go to bed early on Saturday it was Lord it was approaching midnight I was like God they they gonna get a sermon off the cuff and y'all don't want that <laughs> You need me to have a manuscript. <laughs> Believe you me, you need me to have some notes in front of me. But God just said, just love. It's not yeah. that hard. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know you are my disciples. Yeah. This agape love, no matter what they do to us, we simply love them because it's Jesus on the inside of them. And may I add that there are also tremendous, glorious, spectacular benefits that we receive from the Lord when we do this kind of love. Jesus says, I choose you that my joy may remain in you and your joy will be full. I choose you and you're no longer called servants, but you're called friends. I choose you that you will bear fruit and your fruit will last. I choose you and whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give to you. Saints of God, that's the blessing simply from the power of love. God chose us. Lord, have mercy. When we think about that, oh, in spite of all our mistakes, in spite of all our missteps, in spite of all our shortcomings, in spite of our sin, God chose us. Beauty of this lets us know that it's not our decision to make, but it was God. I started thinking about that song, and don't, don't not sing this song, but I started thinking about that song. I'm so glad I found the Lord Jesus in time. Y'all know that song. Amen. I've sung that song. I've led that song. I ain't got nothing against that song. But I started to think, you didn't find him. He found you. Amen. You were down deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the seas heard your disturbing cry, and from the waters he lifted you. Now safe and I, love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Hallelujah. When nothing else could help, he found and he chose us and I'm so glad God took the lead on that amen because there's a time in my life y'all I would not have chosen God I'm going to choose going to the club I'm going to choose I'm going to keep smoking sorry mama I did used to smoke back in high school my bad I never told you but hey hey it's out there now Aunt Clara sorry it's out there now amen amen I wouldn't have chosen God there was some times in my life I still wanted to do what I wanted to do 
that God chose me to give him his give me his joy. He chose me to give me his peace. He chose me to give him his grace. He chose me to give me his love. He chose me to give me his mercy. He chose me to be a part of the kingdom vision. He chose me that my fruit would remain the fruit of love and joy and peace and long suffering and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. When I love, he chose me and calls me friend. So that my prayers will be answered. Now people hear that verse, I'm almost done. Ah, my prayer's gonna be answered, amen. I'm gonna get a Ferrari. Lord, give me a Ferrari. <laughs> Lord, give me a Lamborghini. Prayers will be answered. But when we hear verses like that, and it, and it breaks people's hearts sometimes, it, it's not like that, give me a Ferrari, give me a 10 bedroom house, give me this, that, and the third. But it's, he's giving you the desires of your heart. He's filling your heart with what you should want yes. Yes. based on his will yes. for your life. Amen. So maybe you just need a hoop thing. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Amen. Like I drive. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Maybe you don't need, he's going to give you what that desire should be. God's going to fill you up. You right here with God. And so you're going to pray for somebody's well-being. You're going to pray, hallelujah, for somebody's uplifting. You're going to pray that God work through you, that you can help and bless others. When he answers your prayers, those prayers line up with what God wants for the world and wants for your life. And so in our prayer today, we're going to pray for ourselves, yes, but we're going to pray that God give us the strength to tap into the power of love. And so we end this sermon today with a prayer. Amen. Every eye closed and every head bowed. Dear God, it must have really been difficult for the disciples. Like sometimes this thing called love is difficult for us. God, they were confronted with your upcoming death. And they wanted to keep your son, Jesus, near to them forever. But God, you understood their fear. And you understood their concern. And you offered them something greater than even that. You offered them the gift of Jesus' love. We're called to love one another, God. And it's not easy for us either. But you don't call us to anything less. God, you call us to be patient and kind and forgiving and respectful and strong towards one another. The world would have us to believe that love is an emotion which is manipulative. But love is agape. Amen. We can't always help how we feel, but love is a decision. God, help us to make the right decisions. We pray for ourselves. We pray for our strength. We pray for wisdom. We pray for power. We pray for your presence. And we pray for a higher understanding. So, God, may our love take the form of service, compassion, hope, and proclamation. Open our hearts, God. And imprint your message of love upon each and every one of us. That in all we say and all we do in your name is in your will. And it's for the sake of your people and for your world. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 Let's give God some praise. Amen.